Here it is. I finally have a garage. I can no longer be called obsessed carport. Uh, the garage is roughly, well, it's kind of a weird dimension, but the main bulk of it's 31 by 21 in change, uh, 10 foot three inch, 10 foot four inch ceilings, and uh, three bays. So you know what that means, garage transformation. So today's video, we're gonna get into relocation of the air conditioner, the air handler for the main house, uh, as well as uh, installation of a mini split. Uh, we talked about some different options on how to set it up. So we're doing an 18,000 BTU Mitsubishi mini split. Uh, of course, I'm gonna have to do some insulation in here as well as a follow-up. Uh, but today, my friends from Kalos are coming to uh, help me, well, to do the relocation and installation. So let me show you what we got. So uh, this is a three and a half ton carrier. The house was built in late 2016. Uh, so it's a few years old, but uh, this unit is in great shape. Uh, it's uh, good to reuse. Uh, and so you have the return and then the main air handler and then there's the you know return, everything is vented or whatever they call that in air conditioning lingo underneath here. So we're going to remove this entire section. This entire piece uh, is going to be removed. I don't know about the stem wall, we'll find out, but in theory this whole 24 inch deep section is going to come out and this will open up an area for what I think is going to be the shrine of my uh, of my um, uh, pressure washer. So I think I'm going to put the pressure washer on this wall uh, what we may do is uh, we, you know, we'll probably end up tearing the drywall down, do some pretty sophisticated insulation uh, to try to dampen some of the vibration of the pressure washer when it's on. Uh, my son's bedroom, actually his headboard is right on the back of this. Uh, so uh, we'll probably want to we'll figure out something for that. Another possible location for the pressure washer would be here. Uh, but what's going to happen is that we're going to take this vertical unit uh, they're going to make it horizontal. I'm going to show you up in the attic. They're basically going to take it straight up and uh, build a little platform, put it in the attic, put a drain pan, uh, drain it out to the side of the house. And then uh, we'll also talk a little bit about supplemental dehumidification, which we may do in the house. We'll see. I want to stay here for a little while and see what, it, what the comfort level is like in the summer. Uh, I'll also show you there's uh, about uh, 12 inches of uh, open cell uh, isonine, uh, so we're going to actually uh, uh, drop a duct into the attic uh, so that the attic is also conditioned because it's sealed off from the elements. So we're going to see a pretty significant transformation. This gives me two feet by six feet, uh, so it gives me uh, some more square footage in the garage and then gets this ugly contraption out of here. It's going to cost me 4000 bucks to do that. So I get the absurdity of that, but this is my freaking garage. I haven't had one in five years, so um, screw you, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway, and uh, it's worth every penny to me to do it. It actually costs more to do this than it would to just do a new air, con air conditioner installation. So uh, that's the plan for today. So we moved in, what, uh, 10 days ago, eight, eight day, nine days ago, something like that. I feel like we've made some really good progress. I don't have a single box left other than the few boxes of things that are going in the cabinets that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, but this entire back wall will be cabinets. Uh, the mini split unit, the uh, whatever you call it, the, the air handler for the mini split is going to go here. And then the uh, one of the boxes outside of the condenser uh, goes uh, somewhere next to the, or the air handler, I guess I should say. No, the air handler would be the thing inside, so the condenser is the thing outside. That's going to sit on a little platform next to the, the three and a half ton unit. Uh, but the we're going to center it up here right off of the electrical panel bad luck in that they put the panel right smack in the middle, the most important part of the darn garage, but that's typical home building for you. Uh, Mike and I talked about relocating this, but that would be a, a huge project that I don't know is worth the payoff. The beauty is this box is right at counter height. All the Sonic and stuff counter heights are at 40 inches, and so this is at well, like 40 and a half inches, so I'm going to be able to do a counter it's going to be a roughly 24 foot counter. Let's see, 31 less 8. Yeah, so 26 
ish, you know, foot, uh, 25 foot um, uh, countertop, something like that, uh, across this entire back wall. I'm putting a 75 inch Sony uh, LCD in here. Uh, I hate LCD, but uh, because of the glare, uh, in order to have a usable display, I'm going to put that. Uh, that on the back wall here and it'll just sit right below the, the mini split unit so hopefully it doesn't dump water on it. Uh, but this setup here, the back wall will have every Sonic tool in existence uh, and less uh, the one inch and three, and I actually have all the three quarter inch tools. Uh, it will also have every Milwaukee tool from my master collection I'm creating, every Milwaukee accessory. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing Sabre cabinets in here. Uh, I like the Sonic cabinets better but uh, I haven't done Sabre in a while and uh, I want to do Sabre in this house. I don't intend to be here forever, so uh, I'd also, the cabinets will likely stay in this garage when I sell the house. So uh, we're gonna do the more entry level solution in here in this garage. <clears throat> so let's talk lighting. So, so this darn garage has uh, three lights, you know, it's like, 700 square feet and has three two bulb little frosted fix fixtures in here. Uh, I'm gonna be doing, uh, this is gonna be my first foray into Cree lighting. We're gonna do, uh, I think they're called ZR troffers and some KR recessed lighting. I may even do some Cadient stuff in here, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll be getting into that here shortly. I'm gonna have uh, um, um, some representatives from Cree come help me do some lighting calcs and figure out what needs to be done here. I want to be able to dim it. I want to be able to have control when the garage door opens that a certain amount of lights turn on. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty, pretty sophisticated lighting setup. Uh, the other thing I've got to incorporate into the ceiling design is uh, I want to do a set of magic stairs to replace. Uh, I'll be talking about that more to replace the regular uh, attic stairs. Uh, because I don't have a lot of storage in this house, I do need some, uh, I do need access to the attic. The attic runs this whole, you know, the whole section above the garage here. And so that's where I'll be storing, you know, stuff that isn't used as often uh, in, the, in the garage here. The doors, doors will need to be insulated. So I'm going to have to work on that, figure that either, either I replace the doors or just do some tuck-in insulation, but I'm going to have to insulate those. Uh, we're also going to do high lift doors. Uh, I may have uh, some powder coated black uh, rails done, we'll see, uh, but the doors will actually stop somewhere around here and carry the radius all the way up to the ceiling. We'll do uh, LiftMaster 8500 jack shaft operators. This is an 18 foot door. Uh, these are hurricane braces that they put on all Florida uh, garage doors. And this is an eight foot door. I wish they were eight by eight, but it's eight by sevens. So these are only seven feet tall. Um, so I don't even know if the Raptor will fit through the doorway. I think the Raptor might be a little taller than seven feet. So the garage doors are gonna get done. I'm gonna work on uh, finding some uh, solutions as well that uh, seal up the, uh, the door so that we can you know, air condition this and dehumidify this. So we're gonna start with a Mitsubishi 18,000 BTU unit and we're going to start with relocating the three and a half ton. Uh, we're going to vent and condition the attic as well. Uh, and uh, the hope is that I won't need to add a, a dehumidifier, but we may add a dehumidification as well uh, to the house uh, because the house is a sealed envelope, uh, unlike most houses that have vented soffits in the attic. So we'll be talking to the Kalos guys about that. Swiss tracks flooring. Noose bomb lift, we're likely going to put the lift here and I think I'm going to cut the concrete in this and uh, recess it. Uh, so that way uh, the lift, you know, doesn't impede our ability to park wherever I want. Because likely I'll keep two cars in here even though it comfortably fits three. Uh, so uh, most of the time we'll just pull right in the center of this. Uh, but I do want the lift over here. Uh, and so I'm going to really think through how that works. Uh, and then I've got to do the things that all you have to do. I have to fit bikes and balls and other things, other kids crap helmets, things like that in here somehow. Uh, so I'm going to dig into that. So this is a little golf cart area. I don't golf and uh, have no desire to. If I did, you'd probably never see me in a video because I'd be obsessed with it. Uh, but this is a roughly eight by nine and change, almost 10 foot area. Uh, this is something I hate more than anything. They put the frickin' water heater in the middle of the garage. Build a closet in the middle of the house and put it somewhere. Get it out of here. 
Plus having it all the way in the garage means that by the time the water gets to the master bath, it's, uh, you know, it's, it takes a freaking half an hour. You're wasting a lot of water. So I'd like to consider doing some sort of recirculating line in the house as well. But this is coming out. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, but in a, in a perfect world, I would like to relocate and run the lines up through the attic, out to the side of the house. I'd like to do a water filtration and uh, you know, softening system as well as uh, some version of a gas, um, gas powered um, um, tankless uh, on-demand water heater, either a Renai or Ream or something like that. And so this very likely will be coming out. Um, this would be a logical location for the pressure washing system. Uh, so I may consider putting it on here. It may make more sense because this is on the uh, this is on the wall of the uh, the laundry room. I don't know. So we're gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna consider how much insulation I can get. Uh, but the the this will clean up, and I uh, gotta figure out what I'm gonna set up in this area. The window kind of messes things up, and so I may put a, a large closet type cabinet here. Uh, I may just hang the bikes in here. I, I want to keep this walkway unimpeded. Uh, so, you know, you could put a cabinet here or bikes here, but I don't know that I want to do that. So that's the garage. We're waiting for the Kalos guys. They should be here in about 20 minutes, and then we'll get into this project of following them along while they tear this thing apart. All right, so here's where the air handler is going to go. It's actually right below all this open cell stuff. So we're actually going to tear this out and... Uh, because this is all going to be insulated what they do is they seal off the garage from the rest of the house i'm going to open that back up because we're going to be running electric lines and stuff for my new uh new refrigerator and stuff like that but they're going to build a platform as far back as possible but right behind this little cardboard wall of open cell isoning spray foam um, is where the air handler and the you know return and all that uh, the the ducting for the air handler and the return is right right behind this so we're going to tear this out and then mount the unit horizontally right here but you can see the you know the attic has some some purpose to it um, all Michelle's decorations and uh, Kate's future clothes are up here uh, that I would like to punt in the trash but uh, you know. I hear you. I hear you when uh, you say people have uh, you have crap to put somewhere. If I didn't have this space, we wouldn't be doing this. I'd figure out how to hire some company to bring the decorations and then take them out of here. But this whole area is going to get uh, closed cell, uh, probably four inches of closed cell foam. We'll seal this off, and then we'll also you know, condition this space as well. And then the question is whether we do some supplemental dehumidification about the attic and bring fresh air into the house. We'll see. You know how it. Uh, how the house uh, it, how the house feels this summer. And then this whole thing coming out too. Yep, we can rip everything out. Yep. Working on the design for this thing. See, look at that. 30-ish feet of cabinets across the back. Now I have to decide, do I do four drawer, six drawer, open? Do I put the TV on the left side or the right side? I've been toying with that. Lift is gonna go here. Where do I put my hose reels? I was thinking I put them up against the wall and just make it a real simple install. You know, or do I mount them in all four corners? Yeah, with a 10 foot ceiling, it's different than a uh, than having a you know, 16 foot ceiling. Do I put some cabinets here or there? Do I put the pressure washer here? Do I put it here? Do I put it over here? You know, where do I put the darn thing? I don't know. So we're putting the mini split right up in that corner, right next to the... So it would make logical sense that I put the TV underneath the mini split, other than the, you know, the water, potential water dripping down on the TV, but what do I care? It's a freaking cheapo LCD. Just get a new one. <sighs> Whatever I do, it's gonna be freaking great. We're doing custom wood tops one giant long top's gonna really cost me three times more to ship it here than it is to uh to um pay for it you know my orange vice i need to figure out what do you think i should do for some sort of backsplash in here i want to do something cool some, uh, your get some diamond plate no freaking diamond plate no diamond plate no slat walls i'm not hanging any junk on the walls 
It is a 18,000 BTU Mitsubishi. It's a nice little heat pump system that can heat this nice little area and also cool it down nicely. It's good that it just kind of snaps on. A little bit more sturdy than most of the carrier one is. Yeah. But they're not heavy at all, so. Never hurts to have a few extra anchors just in case. So then the nice thing about a mini split install is you basically do the whole saw and drill a two inch right. hole. You know, two out. and a half inch, good to go. So there's our bracket. So I called about my cabinets. I'm doing nine six drawers. I'm gonna do a 30 inch in that little pocket there. 248 inch and I order an extra 48 inch because I'll probably put it somewhere in here. All in silver. Um, normally we do 24,000 BTU units. We did a slightly smaller unit, which means it'll work a little harder, which will provide a little bit better dehumidification. Correct. Is the concept. So you can oversize the air conditioner and then it doesn't turn on enough and doesn't do what it needs to do. So the smaller the system, longer the runtime, better dehumidification. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got the little M12 uh, SDS. It works nicely. Yeah. See how much trouble I get in this video. People think, can't you leave the guy alone? I'm like, we're trying to make a video, people. You gotta ask the questions in order to make the engaging content. If you want to call it engaging. I just think this is a common thing that a lot of people will do. I don't know about relocating the other air handler, but I'm a little worn out on the old projects here. I still have to do a couple more rooms. Yeah, the other cool thing about the Swiss tracks, I mean, you see the wind blows right through the garage from front to back. So you see all those leaves, they won't make it that far. I'm gonna find out what that tree is. I think it's that tree right there. I'm gonna freaking cut that thing down with a sawzall immediately. Tie a little rope to the raptor and rip that sucker straight out. I see what you're saying. So the hole comes out this right on top of it. Out of the soffit. So that way I can hide everything up here and just bring it straight down to the unit instead mm. of coming down, having to go around a little bit. And then on the uh, on this, you have to pull the Freon out or Puron. So he, he was saying he's bringing. There's a tank in here, so he's pulling it. He's sucking it all out of the lines in the house and then pulling it and it's keeping it in the tank here. There's no going back now. We got a giant hole in the wall. I thought you wanted more ventilation. <laughs> a little pass-through, a little pass-through breeze. <laughs> a little pocket. So the beauty of doing this, if I have this all set up, I don't need fans in here. I'll run it at like 68 degrees. <laughs> Come out, crank it down before I uh, have a big project. No wonder you want to do the mini split first. It's so easy. Oh. The well, that way if it gets hot, then I can actually cool the garage down at the same time. Get the holes through so we can actually get the inside unit up. And then from there, we'll go outside, run line hide to hide the copper lines and get everything in there. And done. So the hole is up above the soffit. So all you're gonna see is the little chase. This down. little line hide coming down. So all you'll get is this just coming straight down. Yeah. Then I'll take this apart just to actually make it easier to wire up things. Uh, it runs off a, a 230. So anywhere between what the 212 or 240 will work on it. And actually everything runs off the main power going straight to the condenser outside. So you get what a ton and a half cooling capabilities for just a nice simple 15 amp breaker. So you got those two little filters. What's the thing that clogs up on these things all the time? It's the drain line? Blower wheel. That only happens usually after uh, honestly about two, three years. So if you look right, just right through there, the little black wheel that's in there, yeah, that'll actually get a little caked up after a couple of years. So we usually say pull and clean that either once every two years up to three years. How do you get it out? 
Oh, very Take carefully. The whole thing apart. Whole thing apart. At least the whole front yeah. cover off. So that's not something I would do. You had a shot. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's the evaporator coil. This whole thing. Evaporator coil. Then you got the drain pan right here. Oh, uh, okay. And from here, you got your little guard and also your wide veins in here. So this drain pan fills up and then it spills over if you don't, if the drain yeah. line gets clogged. Other than that, there's not much to it. Oh, nice system, very low maintenance. So they're basically going to break this down, disassemble it. Does this thing change its orientation when we go to horizontal? Does it yeah. turn sideways? Oh, you're good to let it go, Cisco. You'll have uh, three lines. You'll have the copper lines and the drain line. Then you'll also have the communication wire that'll go between the outdoor and the indoor unit. So we're gonna bring it off just a hair bit to the left, just because I think there's a sprinkler zone right there. they jack up all those veins? Huh? How do they jack up all those veins on that thing? It's like they dropped the blower on it or something when they installed it. People are like, well, how are you going to service it? I'm like, I don't care. That's what Kalos does. <laughs> yeah, this is more work than just buying a new unit. Crazy mold and like, well, you're going to have to tear your whole house apart. You're going to die. Your whole family's going to die. If you don't get the uh, if you don't get this all fixed, oh my God, gosh! So they told me the last house. See, like he's gonna open this up here. It's gonna be filled with death mold, and he's gonna tell me that I'm gonna need to spend another twenty-two thousand dollars to get the death mold out of the house and just rip just rip all the walls off and start fresh and just level the whole place. And I say, well, we'll just take our chances. <laughs> we'll try to survive it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at that. Mostly dirt, 50% death mold. Welcome to Florida, folks. Now let's go see what he's doing out there. This is my kind of work. All right, he's digging holes. Oh, yeah, I was playing in the dirt. Putting this little guy on the on the ground. I need to move to Phoenix and just have a dirt yard, sand yard. I kind of like this all fresh and new, though. You know, that's what I've been doing to this house. I've been better to just buy a new one, but. They have me on a remodeling show. It's like cars, you know, you get a really nice car. So I got a really nice house and just made it nicer. I don't want some stinky old, you know, fixer upper thing. I want a fresh, clean example and then just make it better. It's like little tweaks. That's, that's my bag, that's what I do. Buy a house for 400, spend 100 on it, Sell it for four hundred. <laughs> uh, story of my life. That's cool. These things are already charged, so you could almost rent a machine and do it yourself. I want to say this was like forty-two hundred bucks or something like that. I think they cost you know thirty-five hundred, paying five or six hundred bucks in labor for the install. Ready? Yep. Well, that's a lot of sawdust in there for you, too. <laughs> You'd be surprised what you find under these. Oh, 
those look different than the carriers. It's taller. Taller, a little more stocky. Yeah. Nice. This little guy's gonna keep the uh, garage nice and cool. That's pretty. Makes me want a new one for the house. <laughs> I like new stuff. The house one's like eight grand though, I think, so I don't wanna reuse it. It's only a couple of years old. This couple year old mold doesn't kill you as quickly as a 10 year old mold and 20 year old mold. And here's the lines of these cute little insulated lines that runs through the chase down the side. It screws right in. They vacuum it out, fire it up. Oh, they gotta run there, they gotta power, get power. So they're gonna grab power from the panel here instead of taking up a spot inside. Which means that if I ever needed to reset, like the brake river trip, I'd have to walk three feet to turn it off. I'm probably gonna have to end up doing a sub panel because we're running, we only have six bases and I don't think that panel can accept tandems. And I'm sure I'm gonna need some more circuits because I'm taking up four of them. Re freezer, fridge, and two dedicated 20s. So four of the six empties I'm taking up. I'll need two for the Tesla air compressor, probably an extra lighting circuit. So I'm gonna need a bunch of stuff. So I'll probably need a sub panel. Getting real taxed here, I gotta sit down again. I gotta take a little rest. Can't wait for the comments. Be like, why are you doing this? So stupid. How much was that? It's worth every penny. Not have to see this in my garage. I'm thinking about this. I need to start building houses. I'd be darn good at it. I ordered my fridge yesterday. Fridge and freezer. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sick. Dual 36 inch sub-zeros next to each other single grate or a single um, vent on the top. Oh, it's, it's one of my better ideas that I've had. I'm gonna improve the efficiency by shortening the distance by uh, six, six feet. And there's the heating, heating element. A solid platform though. Huh? That's a solid platform. I use a lot of two by twos, or two by fours. Yeah. Nice. I thought, you know, I wonder if they ran the drain Let's line go down. Ahead. Right here. So you got your hole there. Yeah. It's all right. Swiss tracks is going over top of it, so. Well, positive is, I mean, when it goes up there, your drain line's going to be up there too, so. Hmm? You can cut it right close to the floor, so you don't yep. worry about it. Yep. I feel like I'm gaining a whole nother whole extra extra garage. I was thinking I told Michelle, I said I'm gonna need to get rid of Ryan's closet. Because uh he's just gonna have to figure something else out. I need that area. I finished the line hide so that once we get ready to, in just a few will run the copper straight down to the unit and just whip it right into the porch right here. all that space gained uh six by two 12 square feet that's 12 square feet of premium real estate right there bro a lot easier to use a torque wrench because then it'll actually sit better mm. and everything else i'll push back in when it's on pressure so it doesn't have really a risk of kinking too much yeah it's one thing you can't say about me mike i'll, I'll do all the jobs the like cotton candy. Uh, pressure's good. Checked all that out. So now it's just the vacuum pump. Evacuate the system. So this one's done. And what about the one, the other big one? Uh, that's wired up in there. We've got some wires on this one. Now it's just mostly the uh, high voltage that still needs to be hooked up. And then just a little bit of uh, spray foam. 
some insulated tape up there. Get things sealed up for you nicely. All right, you can see a lot has come out of upstairs. Um, I've been working on meetings and stuff here today, but uh, I'm gonna show you an update on where they're at. Um, you know, they'll be done later today. They've got a charge system and all that, but um, yeah, it's really makes the, the complexity of the system quite a bit less. So it'll be a little bit more direct flow into the, uh, into the system, but man, it's a lot of, a lot of ductwork has come out and been replaced and refreshed. So that's a positive note to this huge project. Well, we knew it was going to be a big project. That's why it was so expensive. So I had to run new copper lines, new drain line out here to the condenser. And uh, it's actually quite a bit shorter run. And I think will be even more serviceable because the other lines will run through the, the concrete. Okay, so here's the status update. You can see they pulled out big chunks of the isonine and then have re, refinished the duct work. Got some other stuff to yank out of here. I'll have to get the drywall patch for there, but now I'm actually gonna have some more storage capability. We'll bring the planking or the, whatever you call this stuff plywood we'll bring it up in here and get some more use out of this space a little bit but i do need to call and get uh get my icing guy scheduled they come and insulate the garage i was doing a little research insulating the garage door is not all that expensive either pretty cool all right so check out my four thousand dollar twelve hundred not 1,200, 12 square feet, 12 square foot area. <laughs> but I guess technically, you know, you get the wall too. So I gained, uh, gained quite a bit more than just a few square feet. So uh, anyway, what I'm likely gonna do is do rock wool uh, in the wall. So we'll probably, Mike and I will probably end up pulling most of that drywall down anyway. And then we got a nice little skylight into the attic there. Isn't that cool? Um, but the, you know, the concept here is that we have a nice, clean, organized spot, or will have a nice, clean, organized spot uh, where my pressure washer is going to go. So I think I'm going to measure it off, but I think I'm going to do a 30 inch cabinet here and then the pressure washing system with a bucket filler and my buckets will park right there. It'll be a nice little spot. I'm going to lop off that drain there with my uh, multi-tool and uh, the switch tracks will go over top of that and of course we'll add you know baseboards and paint it all and get it all set up uh, but we'll have to you know patch the ceiling as well so i'm going to work on i'm going to have a plumber come to pull out the uh this thing the water heater i've been having a tough time with words here lately and then of course we're going to take this door out here uh, so it's going to feel very um, clean and organized in this what is the most important spot in the garage uh, is this this kind of this whole pocket here and of course the cabinets are going to run the gamut and they're going to run the entire uh, section all the way across so i got my mini split installed mini split looks great they did a nice clean install up to up there and uh, the air handler is up in the spot that we showed you earlier so here is our set up there i'll probably pull this down this little open cell section probably scrape this all up and clean it up i'd like to get some uh probably take those two two by fours off get some more plywood and make a walkway out to there and then our lines run down the side here uh, but we're doing all closed cell foam here to insulate the garage sealing this off i just asked him i forgot to ask him if he ran a duct into the attic area but you can see all the setup of the conditioner mounted horizontally there's the drain pan and the little float switch thingy that will kick it off if for some reason needed to be nice clean i gotta take that air pros tab off we ended up having you use a base filter, which I'm okay with. There just wasn't enough room. 
horizontally to fit the big fat filter up here, which kind of stinks. But anyway, I would, I would have rather had it back there than out here further. So there's my new skylight. Maybe I should just leave it as a skylight for the garage. It'd be cool. So that's the wrap on the uh, first little project in the garage. Uh, man, it's dark in here. I got a, a ISO, ISO's bumped to like 2500 and it still looks dark at f2.8. So oh, I've got three light fixtures in this giant garage. So anyway, next thing uh, I'll be talking about will likely be, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I might do paint next, flooring next, garage doors, I'm not really sure. I talked to the guy from Magic Stairs, we're gonna be doing a, an attic stair system here. So uh, plenty of stuff coming for the garage. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Uh, I think this is the common thing that everybody who has an air handler in their garage wants to do. Uh, but you saw the scale of the project was pretty significant. Um, I don't know that it's worth it to everybody. It's certainly worth it to me. Get the air handler out of the garage. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I don't have some funky door. And then for me, I'm going to have a nice little shrine spot for my, my pressure washer. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy garage content coming your way. Lots of cool stuff. See you soon.